And good evening, everybody. It is your girl, Evangelist Cal, here with Second Baptist Church on Facebook Live. It is Saturday. It is February 15th, 2020, and it is about 6.22 p.m. Central Standard Time again on this lovely Saturday evening. It is Saturday Night Live here at Second Baptist Facebook Live page. So I'm very, very glad that you decided to join me. If you are joining me live, I appreciate it. If you are joining me live, make sure that you let your friends, followers, people, enemies, frenemies, everyone know that it is going down live right here, right now, so that they can get a blessing too, get an encouraging word um, on tonight. Also, I want to make mention, again, Second Baptist Church, that's where I'm from. I'm the evangelist, one of the evangelists there. But our pastor is Larry V. Tyler, and we're located, the brick and mortar church is located in Joliet, Illinois, on 156 South Joliet Street. So easy to remember, we're in Joliet, and we're on South Joliet Street. So if you are visiting, if you decide that you want to come visit, please do. We have Sunday morning services every Sunday starting at 1030 a.m. Where you will be blessed by wonderful worship, wonderful word, just wonderful blessings at Second Baptist Church. So we welcome you if you are a visitor, if you are not a member of our church right now. And then, of course, if you're members, you know who I am. If you're members, you know who I am. And I'll see you tomorrow morning. Let the Lord say the same. See you tomorrow morning at 1030 uh, at church, getting ready for word and worship. So thank you again for those who are joining live, for those who are joining on a replay. I don't appreciate you any less. I appreciate you too. Make sure that you're sharing this message too. Let your friends, followers, frenemies, enemies, everyone, family, all of the world on the internet know that you watched this video and you were blessed by it. So I'm going to go ahead and share this as well. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Again, Saturday Night Live, here we go. We are in the month of February, February 15th to be precise. And every year, our pastor is blessed by the Lord to, um, to share with us a theme, a yearly theme that we're going to go with for uh, the church, again, for the whole year. So for 2020, our theme is this, rejoicing in trials as overcomers in Christ. Uh, Y'all might be like, what? Say who? What? Rejoicing in trials. Yeah, that's what we said now. The Lord has dropped in my pastor spirit, rejoicing in trials as overcomers in Christ. So a lot of us, we would pick that very first couple words out, rejoicing in trials. How in the world are we supposed to rejoice in trials? But this is how you do it as overcomers in Christ. That's how we rejoice in trials because we are overcomers in Christ. So it is my prayer that all of us watching today, all of us listening today, that we realize we can be overcomers regardless of the trials that we see, the trials that we face, the trials that we may be in. We can overcome. We have the power of Christ in us to help us overcome. We have the authority of Christ to help us overcome. No doubt about it. So I want us to we got to hold on to that, first of all, in order for any of the whatever else I'm about to say makes sense. We have to really understand that we are overcomers. And not just because we say that we are. We are over beca overcomers because God says that we are. We cannot let the trials beat us down. We got to beat the trials down. <laughs> all right. All right. So what I want to do tonight is talk about how do you overcome? How do you overcome? Because yes, truth be told, we do have a lot. We have a lot that we're dealing with from day to day uh, regarding different trials, different hurts we may experience, different losses, lo what? Different losses <laughs> we may experience. So we do, we do come, a, come up upon a lot of different things that may hit us from the left, from the right unexpectedly, right? That is a very true statement. That is, that's facts so to speak. But the truth of God's word still stands and the truth of God, God's word trump the facts that may be going on in our lives. And I want to point out a few scriptures. Actually, um, pastor has laid out a, a bunch of potent scriptures around the theme that we're talking about today, but I'm going to use a few different ones or it might, they might overlap. Uh, but I, I just want to go through some word <laughs> because it is the word that helps us overcome. So first off, how do you overcome? It's through the word. It is definitely through the word. If we don't know the word of God, there was no promises that we can hold on to, to give us hope, to, uh, to allow us to propel and excel in our faith. There's nothing to hold on to without the word of God. And then we, at the very core, at the very foundation, at the very baseline, 
We have to believe that God's word is bond. It is the absolute truth. There's no variation. There's no, it applies to that person, but not me, or it applies to me and not that person. It is God's word. His word is absolute truth. This is how we begin to overcome. And yes, we are overcomers. Yes, we are. Miss Cole, we are overcomers. Are we not? All right. And I like that. And you know what? That brings up another point that's kind of uh, off topic, but related to what we're talking about here. So we, we the theme again, uh, rejoicing in trials as overcomers in Christ. Sometimes we got to declare that thing. I see Miss Cole put that up there. Uh, yes, I am an overcomer. I am an overcomer. And a lot of times we got to speak that thing out in faith before we begin seeing the results around us. That's how we activate our faith. We speak it. Sometimes we got to speak things before we see them even manifested because we believe God's word and not what we see. We believe God's word and not what we hear. We believe God's word and not what we heard. We believe his word. So we speak his word that tells us that we are overcomers. So if, if y'all can all say that anybody that's watching live, anybody that's watching by replay, I want you to type that in the comments. Yes, I am an overcomer. Yes, I am an overcomer. Okay, I want you to type that. We, 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 we activate our faith on today or whenever it is that you are watching this. We are activating our faith on today that we are overcomers. Because trust me, I know about the trial. God knows I'm going through one now. But you know what? That does not negate the fact of the truth of who God is to me. It does not. I know that his power still works within me. I know I still have the authority of Jesus Christ working through me to help me overcome the trial. All right, three points. I'm going to try to hit it and quit it. It's what, 629 about right now? Three points I'm going to talk about, about how do you overcome. So these are three different points. So first of all, in order to overcome, you got to know the truth. All right. So you got to know the truth. I kind of touched on that already. You got to know the king. Mm -hmm. And you got to know the purpose. Yeah. Y'all got that? So we're talking about knowing the truth, knowing the king, and knowing the purpose. All right. So let's back up here. Talking about knowing the truth. So scripture. John 16 and 33, John 16, 33, I'm reading from the New King James Version, states this, these things I have spoken to you, that in me you will have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I like that. This is Jesus speaking. All right. So Jesus speaking to us. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I love it. I love it. So let's look at this here a little bit. So Jesus is making it very plain to us, just in case we don't understand how it's going to be here. Our time on earth is going to be, in case we don't understand, Jesus made it very plain. <laughs> in the world, you'll have tribulation. Okay. So that, that wasn't a... um a maybe, a perhaps, or, you know, if you, if you behave a certain way, you're going to have tribulation. Um, if, if you grew up in a certain family, uh, lifestyle, you'll have tribulation. Nope. God did not, or Jesus did not specify <laughs> a certain, uh, uh, any type of behaviors or any, any prerequisites. <laughs> he did not specify any prerequisites to having tribulation. All he said is, in the world, you will have trouble. You will have tribulation. Okay. So knowing the truth, knowing the truth. And um, this is important truth to, to realize because I think this will be a great help for most of us because I think sometimes <laughs> we think as believers of Christ and even those who don't believe feel like the why me syndrome. The why me syndrome. Why is this happening to me? Why am I going through this thing? Huh. Why is this happening to me? Why is it happening again? Why is it still happening? <laughs> yeah, we get that syndrome quite heavily. Can I get a witness? Can I get someone? Or is it just me? That we be like, man, look, why is this? Like, come on now, God. Why is this happening to me? Scripture says in his word. <laughs> in his word, that we're going to have tribulation. So we have to get off of our high horse, our entitlement, get out of our entitlement camp and realize that we're going to have them. 
<laughs> that we're going to have them. All right. So we, 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 we know that, but we also know the further truth is that Jesus has come to overcome the world. Right. He's come to overcome the things of this world, the trials of this world, the tribulation of this world. He's come to do that. All right. But but we got to know that truth. So we know the truth that the trials are going to come. But we also know that Jesus is here to overcome it. So we just need to hold on to him. So we just need to hold on to him. So back to the point of knowing the truth about the trials that they will come. I don't want us to get overly discouraged when they come. I don't want us to fall down into a deep hole and a deep pit of depression and sadness because we're experiencing trials. It should be expected according to the word of God. And especially as believers of Christ, we are going to be challenged even more by the trials and the tribulations. And I'll get to that in a little bit. But especially as, as believers, as children, we must expect the trial to come because he said it will. <laughs> and he didn't say it was going to come once. Didn't say it was going to come twice. He didn't give a figure. But just the fact that in that we're living here in a fallen world, trials are going to come. Y'all get this? Y'all get this? Trials are going to come. That's just the bottom line. It's how we receive the trial. Again, that's why this wonderful theme has been shared with us how we can rejoice in the trial because they're coming ready or not here we come <laughs> that's what the trials are saying ready or not here we come yeah so it's how we we receive them how we deal with them how we walk through them how we get around them how we get over them is what's going to make the difference so i just want us to take hold of that that truth that trials are going to come trials are going to come all right let's move to our next point Knowing the king. So we talked about knowing the truth about the trial that is coming. Now we're talking about knowing the king. Knowing the king. So Jesus already talked about it in the last scripture that I read in John 13, uh, 16, that um, we can have good cheer because he has overcome the world. And of course, our relationship with him, we are joint heirs with him. So guess what? That means we have overcome the world too. But let me read a different scripture to kind of bring this point home. This is exciting, y'all. I don't know about y'all, but this is exciting to me. This is coming from 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5. The scripture read as follows. It says, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Come on with it, Lord. Let me read that part again. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Verse five, who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the son of God. Oh, come on with it, father. Yes, yes, yes. So for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Are you not a born again believer? Are you not a born? Am I not a born again believer? Yes, we are. So because we are born of God, we have overcome the world as well. Didn't, didn't Jesus just talk about him overcoming the world? So again, we have that power, that authority through our relationship with him to overcome these trials. So we may not know every single step. You know, we're going through something, right? And we, we're upset and we don't know how we're going to make it. And we don't know how we're going to get through it. We feel like we might just we want to roll up in a ball and die. You know, we, we, we may feel these types of things. However, because we have a relationship, we know the king, we know that we don't have to worry. All right, look at me. Look at me in this camera. Y'all looking? Are you still here? Because that's my testimony. I'm still here. I have not rolled up in a ball and died because of my trial. And neither have you if you're watching me. So it's our relationship with God that keeps us. It's our relationship that makes us overcomers of the things of this world. So I've heard it said before, you know, I don't have to know what the end's going to be as long as I do know the one who does know. <laughs> he is guiding this thing. 
He is guiding and directing my steps every step of the way. He is holding me in my midnight hours when I'm crying. He is comforting me when I need comfort. He is providing for me when I need providing for. Amen. That is more than enough to overcome the trial. That is more than enough to overcome the trial, to know the one who knows. And I'm not talking about a head knowledge. Oh, I know who God is. I done read the God. Yep, went to church. I know who he is. No, you don't. You got to know him for his word because his word is him. His word is him. Because if you didn't know these scriptures, these even just these ones that I'm presenting today, if you didn't know that as, a, as, as, as someone born of God that you can overcome, you would know that you could overcome. Right. So we have to know God for his word. And I love again, as that scripture continues on. And this is the victory that has um, overcome the world. It's our faith. It is our faith, y'all. And um, I want us to know this. I want us to know this. We all have faith. When we become born again believers, when we are born of God, according to the scripture, we have a measure of faith that is in us. As a matter of fact, even before we born again, we have faith because we have faith in so many other things. I don't know why we are so hard to have faith in God. You know, we have faith in um, when we're riding down the street. We have faith that uh, and when we're in a car and we're driving down the street, we have faith that the other drivers are going to stay in their lanes. Otherwise, we wouldn't get on the road. You know, um, when we are um, on planes, we have faith that the pilot is going to get us to where we're going. You know, we have faith every day we sit down in a chair that our chair is going to hold us up and we're not going to collapse to the floor. We have faith in that. We don't even think about it. We just plop ourselves down in chairs. So we all have faith. We all have a measure of faith within us. Now is the time to exercise it and allow it to grow, allow the watering to happen. And how does our faith get watered and grow? Guess what? Through the what? Through the trial. We don't have to exercise any faith when things are going well. Do you understand what I'm saying? We don't have to exercise any faith <laughs> when things are going well. Nothing, nothing to talk about. God is good. And that's, all, that's, that's our song. God is good. Now, when things aren't going so well, can we still declare God is good? Will our faith still speak or will our fear start speaking? Well, our thoughts start speaking. When we start allowing the enemy to infiltrate our words and our mouths and we start speaking the things of him. So we all got faith. And so that is what overcomes. It's our faith. And so again, there's purpose to the trial. I'm, gonna, I'm getting there too. All right. So the trial is coming. Okay. So that's the first thing. Like I said, that's the first thing we got to understand. The truth is that the trial is coming. The trial is on its way. <laughs> the trial is on its way. And that is how we exercise our faith. And that is how we continue to overcome the world is through our faith. We speak the word. We say, huh, you know what? All right, I lost my job. Cool. No big deal. Of course, we're not going to react like that all the time, I'm sure. But we're going to speak the word. Even if we're crying when we lost the job, even like we're upset, we're going to speak the word that God's word says, he shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Even in the midst of the tears after you just got the pink slip. Yeah. So we have to know how to, and then, we're, then, we're, then that's the exercising of the faith. You're still going to speak the truth of God's word, no matter what's going on around you. You're going to exercise that faith. And that's how we overcome. I'm telling you what, we got to stay connected to God. It's our relationship with him that overcomes. And, it's, and it asks the question so pointedly, so pointedly, who is he that overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the son of God. I believe that Jesus is the son of God. So guess what? I'm a world overcomer. I'm an overcomer of my trials because of my relationship with Jesus Christ. And so be it for you as well. So be it for you as well. All right. So those are two first two. So knowing the truth and then knowing the king. And now we are knowing the purpose, knowing the purpose. This is how we overcome y'all. This is what we're talking about. How we overcome scripture. Coming from James. All right. I know this is one of the theme scriptures from pastor. James 1, 2 through 5. James 1, 2 through 5 says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. I'm going through a trial. I'm going through a trial. I'm going through a trial. That's what I'm supposed to be like. I'm going through a trial. This is why. All right. Knowing... This is verse three. 
knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Okay, all right. That's why I'm going through this trial. All right. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Verse five, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Ah, yeah, yeah. Y'all ready to dance it out? Y'all ready to dance it out in the middle of your trial? I'm going through a trial. I'm going through a trial. Count it all joy. I'm going through a Count it all joy. Yes. All right. That's supposed to be the mode. That's supposed to be uh, resonating in our spirit that we're going through a trial. Why? Because we know that the testing of our faith produces patience. So knowing the purpose, knowing the purpose of the trial, we have to be able to say in the middle of a trial, it is well. <laughs> ah, we have to be able to resolve to that thing. It is well. It is well, no matter what it is that we've, that we're encountering, no matter the trial, the tribulation, the hurt, the loss, the pain, we still have to be able to say it is well, it is well. Why? Because there's a purpose to it. There's a purpose to it. Not only is the purpose, uh, the testing of our faith that James meant that, uh, that's mentioned here in the book of James, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But if you go down to five, verse five, where it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. So a lot of times when we're going through trials, we are in a, in a mode of confusion. Who sang that song? One attempt to somebody. Full of confusion. That's how we feel when we're going through trial. We like, man, we, we getting hit from left, from the right, from top to from the bottom. And we're in a mode of confusion at the moment, right? But scripture is telling us, I like, I like how this scripture is, is put together with rejoice in trials. Because what it's telling us here is any of us lack wisdom, let us ask of God. So at the time that we're going through a trial, we, we, we're confused. We may not understand why right away. But scripture here is, 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 is admonishing us to, to, to ask God. Why? And not in the, like I was saying in the beginning, not like the, why me? type attitude, but it's more so, God, show me why. What am I to be learning from this trial? What are you trying to work in me? What are you trying to work out of me? What are you trying, how are you trying to grow me closer to you as a result of this trial? Because I know from experience with me, and I'm talking about me, when I go through something, my knees start hurting. <laughs> when I'm going through something, my knees start hurting. Y'all know what I mean by that? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm on my knees to God. And maybe not literally, but the point is I'm praying. I'm seeking him much more because I need so much help in this situation. And, 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 and God uses these trials for that very purpose, y'all, for us to get to know him on another level for us to to rid ourselves of some things that may be deep down us that we didn't even know are there he works those things out of us through trials yeah see here he's working out the patience the faith produces patience mm. yeah so so there's some things that god is doing in the trial so we got to know the purpose or even if we don't know the purpose we got to know that there is a purpose because sometimes God may not reveal it like that or make it plain right away. That that revelation as to why that trial happened to you may come on the back end somewhere down the line. You can turn around and say, oh, well, look at that. God was working this thing back then, you know. But we have to trust him. We have to trust him with that thing. So, so I like that. So asking God for the wisdom for the, about the purpose. Help, uh, ask him to help you. And I've asked him this too recently in the trial that I've gone through. Like I'd say this, I say, God, give me the grace. <laughs> give me the grace to, to, to get through this trial. Uh, whole <laughs> still together with my mind still, still right. And, um, scripture says, and God reminded me of this, you know, cause sometimes we ask God for things that he done already gave us. <laughs> and, um, I did that. Give me the grace. 
And uh, God said, I, I already done that. <laughs> Scripture tells us that his grace is sufficient. Yeah, his grace is sufficient. And his strength is made perfect in our weaknesses. So we have what we need. We got the faith. We got the grace to make it through. And, and we just ask God to help us grow, help us to walk in the grace that he has given us. Even though we may not necessarily know the full purpose, we know that there is one. So help us to walk in your grace, God, as we're walking out this trial. And we can rejoice in knowing God's got this. His grace is sufficient. He's got a purpose for this. I may know, not know it right this moment, but there's one and I ain't got to know it. But God knows. God knows. So seek him, seek him in, 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 in understanding that there is a purpose for it all. That is how we overcome, y'all. That is how we overcome. God is so good. He, woo, he makes this thing uh, simple for us. You know, not necessarily easy, but simple. Yep. Asking for the wisdom. You know, there's a purpose to this thing. You, I'm growing your faith. You may not like how it feels in the midst, but I'm doing it. You know what I mean? So he makes it simple, but we just have to learn to walk it out. We just have to learn to walk it out. And while we're asking, I want us to be encouraged, you know, while we're asking for the wisdom to help us to, 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 to understand that there is purpose in our trial, God says it here. He's going to give us that wisdom. He's going to give us that wisdom liberally, meaning he ain't going to withhold it. You know what I mean? So that's awesome to know God, when I'm coming to God and saying, God, Lord, I, I, if you can help me understand the purpose, that's awesome. But if not, I know that there is a person, a, a purpose, and he'll he'll give that 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 wisdom of growing in wisdom, knowing that there is a purpose, or he may let you in on what the purpose is. I love that he gives it liberally. That's what the scripture says. That's what it says. So, y'all know how to overcome now. <laughs> y'all got some help on how to overcome. So again, three points. I've held up a two. Three points. On how you overcome, you got to know the truth. The trial is coming. All right. This is how that's the first step to overcome and to know that there will be one or two or three or four or five. There will be a number of trials. That's number one. Number two, you got to know the king through the trial. That's how we overcome our relationship with him. And then number three, knowing that there is purpose to the trial. This is how we overcome. This is how we overcome. So I encourage all of us study these scriptures that I gave. Um, again, they're John. 1633, then 1 John 5, verses 4 through 5, and then James chapter 1, verses 2 through 5. All right. So, whoo, it's been fun, y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed the ride. Share this message as you're going um, about your way as we're about to sign off here. And um, I love you with the love of Christ. I really do. And I want us all to, to, to overcome. You know what I mean? Oh, I mean... We got a relationship with Christ and we just as pitiful as those who don't. Why? No, we can overcome in the trial, get, gain strength through our relationship with Jesus Christ so that we can overcome the trial. All right. I'm signing off again. It is Evangelist Cal with Second Baptist Church right here on Facebook Live. I invite for any of you who are watching local to the Joliet area who are not members of Second Baptist Church, come and check us out every Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. And our address, once again, 156 South Joliet Street in Joliet, Illinois. And our senior pastor is Larry Tyler. We look forward to meeting you. All right, everyone, have a good night and I will see y'all later.